Two more judges who would wish to ask a Let's question proceed. to the uh, witness. So uh, that we will not uh, require the uh, return of the distinguished uh, yes, so that, Secretary yes. of Justice. Let's proceed. And Mr. President, yes. Uh, there is a fourth, sol fourth soldier in the, uh, in the hall. I forgot. The Lieutenant Colonel uh, Loren Legarda, Mr. President. Uh, of the uh, reserve the, the, uh, the, officer corps. The distinguished senator who graduated from the uh, National Defense College. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, by the way, Mr. The President. Rank of Colonel. Rank of Colonel, uh, Lieutenant Colonel. By the way, let me just uh, uh, make sure that uh, it is understood. She's going to be the first Brigadier General. Senator Lachson was General Lachson. Uh, Lieutenant Senior Grade, Senator Trillanes was Lieutenant Senior Grade. Senator Honasan is uh, DD, dishonorably discharged. <laughs> oh. uh, the gentle lady from Antique, Malabon, uh, Manila, and uh, the Republic has the floor. Mr. President, I'm certain that the majority leader can only say that of um, Senator Honasan because they are the best of friends. And he would be the only one to dare say that. Pag iba nagsabi daw susuntok ni Greg. Hindi. I assure you, hindi nanununtok ng tao si Greg. Maaring ibang ginagawa niya, pero hindi nanununtok. Simple lang po ang aking katanungan kay kagalang-galang na kongresistang uh, Raul Daza. Uh, hindi ko po tatanungin na ating testigo. Just very simple. Article 7 charges that Chief Justice Corona uh, it was partial in favor of former President Arroyo, which, as you say in your impeachment complaint, constitutes betrayal of public trust. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Hmm. May this representation be enlightened as to the degree of partiality and or bias that will warrant such removal from public office of the Chief Justice. In short, I want to understand the threshold of bias and partiality that the Chief Justice exhibited that would warrant his conviction and uh, convince this court that as far, as far as Article 7 is concerned, he has to be convicted on this count. Yes. Um is the question of the distinguished senator whether the conduct of the chief justice amounted to betrayal of trust? Is, is that the thrust of the question? Uh, my, my, I will repeat my question, uh, Mr. Prosecutor. What is the threshold of the degree of bias and or partiality exhibited by the sitting chief justice that would warrant him removal from office if and when he is convicted by the impeachment court? Well, the partiality should be proved by the quantum of evidence that is somewhere between substantial evidence and proof beyond reasonable doubt. It's somewhere between that. Substantial uh, the, the, uh, yes, uh, evidence and proof beyond reasonable so doubt. Somewhere but be, but somewhere that between. covers already the whole spectrum. No, somewhere, yes. be, somewhere between that. Clear and convincing the problem evidence, is that, perhaps? Mm -hmm. The problem is that I, I've been researching, although not as thoroughly as the distinguished uh, presiding officer, I have not found from my research, either from U.S. authorities or from uh, authorities in the Philippines, which fixes that quantum of evidence necessary to convict in an impeachment trial. It is just that it's somewhere between. Uh, I will rephrase my question. Evidence. I understand your answer. Yeah. However, I completely want to understand. With the permission yes, of the Mr. Presiding Officer. If you study uh, Charles L. Black, Jr., written uh, who is uh, from Yale, and uh, uh, Raoul Berger, who is from Harvard, you'll see there that. Uh, it would seem that the requirement of uh, the quantum of evidence required is uh, overwhelming 
ve Pandera'nın çok evidir. Although there are there are indications that clear and convincing evidence is enough. So anyway, that will be a matter that yes, will be discussed in uh, to, to confess, uh, in all candor, uh, I'm unable and I'm not competent to 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 answer that question with uh, with, with reliability. I wouldn't mm -hmm. want. Uh, to answer that in a manner that, that I would That is fine, Mr. Prosecutor. We appreciate yeah. your candor. I think uh, uh, yes. if I, I don't know whether the... Uh, I think the, uh, the question, as I understood it, is asking uh, what, what is the le degree of partiality that will equate into a betrayal of... Public trust. Public trust. Yes. Uh, was it repeated partiality? One partiality, two partiality, three partiality. I, I think that's the... Uh, my, the my presiding answer. officer is, is correct in trying to interpret uh, the question which I posed uh, before the prosecutor. Well, uh, if all the individual acts or actions of the Chief Justice in relation to the TRO that uh, has been the uh, subject of the testimony... Uh, is proven by sufficient evidence whatever is the quantum that may be decided by the court it is our humble submission that that would constitute betrayal of public trust anyway uh, when the defense turn uh, to present their evidence will come I assume that uh, they will, uh, a witness from their side, will uh, be presented to explain many of these things that are being discussed now. So we will see at that point uh, which one is the more weighty story against the other. Okay? Yes, let me ask the question insofar as this TRO is concerned with regards to Article 7, what did the Chief Justice manifest or do that he is being charged with betraying public trust through his biased action, opinions, decision, or his so-called partiality? Well, uh, the, as testified to by the witness, and from my reading, of the dissenting opinions. Uh, there were individual acts of the Chief Justice that together, when put together or pieced together, would show that uh, partiality, among others. One, the fact that because he had the power or authority to decide on the agenda of the court, the two consolidated petitions were agendaed, shall we say, with some, some speed. I wouldn't want to say indecent speed. Number two, being the Chief Justice, it was within his authority under the internal rules to order that the respondent, Secretary of Justice and the other officers be first required to comment on the petitions even if given due course with the end of view of considering the TRO. Number three, the ponente to which the two petitions were assigned on the issue of TRO recommended a hearing and yet that recommendation was not heeded. Well, of course, number four, as testified here just this afternoon, on two at least occasions, his spokesperson, Mr. Marquez, misrepresented what really happened within the court, and yet his spokesperson, Mr. Mo, Mr. Marquez, was never corrected for the interest of the public on those erroneous announcements. And plus... Another is the matter of the efficacy of the TRO was 
assigned to Justice Velasco as ponente. The understanding was that he was going to sit down with Justice Carpio on that clarification.